Welcome to Punching Side Eyes with Josh and Mel. Hi, Josh. Hello, Mel. How you doing? I'm pretty excited, actually. We've got a guest that I I only know enough about to know that I'm excited. I don't really know the person. What is it that you know that makes you excited? The fact that you ran out of breath before you finished listing off all her achievements. <laughs> that, that was probably one thing. Yeah, she's a pretty impressive person. Yeah. Uh, but I also like about her... She's one of my little secret squirrel ones that I've had tucked away, which I think most people maybe would have an awareness of Lauren Lappin, my friend, but they probably don't know at the range or scale of what she has achieved because she just gets on with it and does it. She's not shouting it from the rooftops and telling everyone, I'm amazing, look at me, look at me. She's just very goal orientated and driven. Some of these secret squirrel people, as you call them, Rodney and Josh recently, yeah, they've been some of my favourite guests and I didn't really have any clue who these people were until you brought them on here. So I guess I get excited now about the people I know less <laughs> yeah. just because it's kind of an exploration for me getting to know them. Well, and I hope that that's what it is for other people sort of when there is maybe a little bit of less awareness. We can open the, what do they say, the Pandora's box. (laughs) Yes, correct. And everyone can listen to it themselves. Another thing that you are going to be maybe not as on board with as well is it's beauty industry related stuff that we're talking today. And people would maybe not look at me necessarily and think that I would have any idea of (laughs) that. They might look at you and think maybe. They're going to look at me and think no. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely not. I'm actually excited to see if your higher level intelligence knows any of these terms that we're going to be talking about. Well, you've really set me up there because there's a good (laughs) chance that it's no. (laughs) But I'm excited and just I'm always interested when people build anything for themselves. And, yeah. it, and it works out just to see if there's there's obviously a story there, but if there's any lessons that you can apply to other parts of your life as well. Yeah. So we may as well just cut straight to it. This is Lauren Lappin. If you want to support us, you can go to punchingsideways.com and share the show. Yeah. Or you can buy us a coffee there. A share is as good as a dollar, so both those things keep this running. So, yeah, just share it around. And if you are listening for the first time because Lauren's on here, welcome. And Yeah, thanks. Here she is. So excited. I've got Miss Lauren Lappin here in my Punching Sideways studio today. Thank you so much for coming in. Thank you for having me. Now, the reason that I've got you in here is because you're from the Aubrey Wodonga local area, but you've done so much impressive stuff that I don't actually think that a lot of people from around here know the capacity that you have and what you've been able to achieve from this area. And I'd really like to to dig into it a little bit because I think some people always will think that, you know, we're from a small town and that's about as you have to get away to make it big. But you've been here the whole time. Is that right? Yes, I have been here the whole time. The whole time. And for those of you who don't know... Lauren Lappin should be much more well-known because she is very high up, let's say, in the beauty industry, which is not an industry that you would think would be affluent, I suppose, but I feel like you're quite successful. Can you tell me sort of how it all started? I suppose it started, you know, way back in high school. I was just that girl that really enjoyed doing everyone's makeup and helping everyone get ready for everything. And uh, I wanted to do beauty straight out of high school, but my mum and dad wouldn't let me. <laughs> Parents. You're going nowhere with um, beauty. That's the thought. Yeah. yeah. My, my, I can remember my dad saying, I'll never make any money out of that. And so I went and did IT. Yeah. So I worked in the IT industry for... Uh, about five years. And then I couldn't afford to do the diploma of beauty therapy at the time. You know, I didn't have 
rich parents or anyone willing to pay for it for me. Um, And at the time, there were just private colleges here Mm -hmm. in Wodonga. And I think it was about ten or fifteen thousand dollars to do the diploma of Holy physiotherapy. Moly. It's yeah. really pricey. So for an eighteen-year-old that, yeah. you know, um, doesn't really have anyone backing <laughs> them, yeah. yeah, I couldn't do it. So um, I think in about two thousand and seven or two thousand and eight, Aubrey Tafe, Riverina Tafe, started offering the diploma of beauty therapy. And it was a lot cheaper. It was only about four or five thousand dollars, and I could afford to do it then because I'd been working full time for a few years. And yeah, I went and did it, and loved it. Loved the job. I worked in a few different salons, had kids, moved away for a short while, came back and opened. Well, I worked from home for a bit, but I really loved doing this weird thing at the time called eyelash extensions. Um, So, yeah, 2009 I was trained in salon um, (laughs) and was let loose on clients after one of the other girls showed me how to do it, like, in 10 minutes. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) And I don't know, I'm a real crazy OCD perfectionist type person, so I just kind of took to it. I, it's my, my zen, my happy place. I found flow sticking fake eyelashes on people. Yeah. So, yeah, I just kind of took it from there. And I, when I came back from Sydney and I'd had my two kids, I just, um, I really, yeah, wanted to open my own salon. So how did that, so I'm just going to interrupt you. No, it's okay. The idea of opening a salon in beauty, Mm -hmm. did that sort of come with the same sort of resistance from your parents and everything like that going, oh, what are you doing with yourself? Why are you you going into this industry where it's just Um, lashes? Well, well, I initially wasn't – I was going to open a full-service beauty salon. I was going to do everything. I was going to do facials, body treatments, everything. But I don't know, I just had this idea one day that – I wanted to focus on lashes because there was nothing like it around here. Mm -hmm. And I felt that that was the way the industry was going, which funnily enough, it has turned out that way. There's a lot of specialists in different areas now. But yeah, no, my mum was quite supportive at that stage because I think she kind of realised that I was actually good at it (laughs) (laughs) and I was happy doing it. But my dad, you know, he he was a business banker and mm-hmm. he obviously in his day has seen a lot of businesses fail. So he was very um, resistant to the idea of me starting my own business. Yeah. <laughs> so any business, not just yeah. a beauty business. Yeah. But I like my dad and my stepmom, they did. They did. And even up until a couple of years ago, they really thought that lashes were a fad. Okay. And that it was going to pass and they were quite concerned about me that, you know, I was going to go <laughs> bankrupt or something because it was just a bit of a phase that was going to pass. So, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Can we just go back for a second? Yep. Because we skipped over maybe more time there than yeah, we normally would. I'm sorry. That's I'm all right. Sorry. No, it's, it was good. It gave us, it gave us the full, <laughs> like, it gave yeah. us the full map of everywhere up. I didn't really up and... know where to start. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you, no, it was done, great. You've done well. Just why... If you had the idea of wanting to move into beauty at some point, or that was what you were interested in, what led you to IT out of all the potential other things you could have studied and worked in? What was it about IT? Did you have an interest in that, or was that purely just moving almost the well, it's the opposite of what you've done now? You just moved into the thing that was a guaranteed job. I was good at fixing computers. <laughs> okay, well, that's a good reason. <laughs> um, and yeah. when did when did that start? Is that yeah. something you're always good at? Yeah, just sort of during high school, I was that person that you know set up everyone's you know Oz star for them. <laughs> I think that's going back a while. Here's the thing though, you you wouldn't necessarily go <laughs> beauty therapist. <laughs> like that's a like a ditzy persona that is like that's a stereotype it's an assumption yeah yeah yep. and then think oh no she can fix computers which is so, what i love so like, you would have been the most useful beauty apprentice well, around the place then if you could have fixed the computers and the technology yeah doing um it 
really helped me later on when I started my business because I did a lot of those things on my own. I only awesome. have recently started outsourcing, you know, my website stuff and things like that. So, yeah. Oh, no, that just fascinated me because my last job, I wasn't at all in IT, but I was very tech savvy. Yeah. And I got moved into a pretty prominent IT job without probably having any of the background that I should have had. Yeah. <laughs> and I just found it, it was, people don't realize about IT and I know this is a bit of a tangent, but it's just like anything else. When you find the solution or the answer to something, it can be really gratifying. Yeah. Even though it seems boring to yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I love it when things just work for me. So, or I figure it out and make it work. Nice. I'm kind of obsessed with that. <laughs> so let's talk about this because I met you when you had your little, so you'd had your home salon, you'd started the salon in City Walk. Yes. In I, Aubrey. Yes. I was in a tiny little 30 metre squared shop next door to Yums in City Walk. Which is still very, pro- like, I love Yums. Yeah, Yums is, I think Yums has been around nearly as long as I've been alive. Yeah. It's an institution. <laughs> so it's a Allure Lash and Beauty for anyone that's just catching up with, you should already know this right. if you're from the area. <laughs> and if we've done our job, we would have mentioned it yeah. in the intro. <laughs> yeah. And, and that grew quite quickly, didn't it? When I say grow, this obviously the space didn't grow, but the, the business grew. Yes, it grew a lot faster than I would have ever anticipated. I got the little shop because I thought I'll just be working on my own for at least two years. I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just be in there on my own. So after six weeks of opening, I opened in July 2014 and I was working three days a week because I only had, I couldn't afford childcare for my kids um, any more than that. Yeah. So I used to work Thursday, Friday and Saturday. My husband was home from work so he could look after the kids. And yeah, I uh, just chose to work those three days and I worked stupid hours. You know, I came in at eight and left at 10 or 11 o'clock at night or, you know, ridiculous things like that. And, you know, just to fit as many people in as I could. But yeah, within six weeks, I was booked out over a month in advance. Mm -hmm. So I had to add in, I thought, oh, well, I need to start working an extra day because I probably can't afford daycare now, (laughs) that extra day for my two kids. And um, yeah, so then it took another four weeks and I was booked out um, a month in advance. And I was working probably, I think I was working like 42 hours in four days. And yeah, I knew I needed to hire someone. Okay. So you you touched on before that the people around you were saying that maybe it was a bit of a fad. Yeah. So I'll ask you a two-part question. Yep. What was it about it that you believed maybe wasn't a fad? And did that initial growth period, did that fuel the fire of the fact maybe it was a fad in your own mind or the people around you, or did that confirm for you that it's not a fad? If you like us, like I like us, Get onto punchingsideways.com, give us a bit of a likesy, have a bit of an exploration around and maybe buy us a coffee. I never thought it was a fad. I The growth, I think, I don't know, I was kind of just in this little... You were just working. I was just working. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about all those extra things going on. I wasn't listening to, you know, my family and stuff like that. But um, I was just focused and, yeah, I, I don't know, I don't... I never thought it was a fad. I thought that it was going to get bigger and bigger. It only, you know, to this day, it's way, I don't know, you know, it's kind of like this little offshoot of the beauty industry as a whole, I guess, but it's just ridiculous. It's it's insane. And I really believe that social media is responsible for this growth within the beauty industry because people are, you know, people are photographed at, any given moment during the day and then that, you know, 30 seconds later or less, that photo can be, you know, posted online or, you know, on a, yeah, online, anywhere. And people want to look good all the time and I think that people, you know, they're scrolling Instagram, they're heavily influenced by what they're seeing on there and I think people just want to look fabulous all the time and, yeah, it's just an it's massive growth within this so, industry. So just to put the timeline out there for people, 
When did the lashes salon start? 2014. So that was around when Instagram probably started to move out of its North American yes. phase into a global. Yes. So you were kind of really in line with that explosion, I guess, in that visual platform. Definitely. Definitely. I think I had a personal Instagram early on, uh, maybe, yeah, 2012 ish. And then, yeah, when I started my um, lash salon, I started an Instagram account for the business. And, you know, I was posting on there just as much as I was posting on my Facebook page. And, yeah, I mean, grew that quite quickly as well. So you're a bit ahead of the game, really, though, would you say? When you say that you think that that's what's fueled it all. Lauren makes the game. Yeah. <laughs> That's how I. I just I want to just go a little, little bit yeah. deeper and know why did you trust yourself and over all the other noise maybe from that was around you because it sounds like you you're blocking a lot of that out. But I'm a very stubborn person, <laughs> and <laughs> <Nice>. um, <laughs> once I decide something, not much stops me achieving it. Right. Um, yeah. So, like, so that yeah. sounds to me like you were prepared for it to either be this huge thing you believed it was or you were equally as prepared for it maybe nah, not to be or no. you were just going to make it Failure is n- Failure's not an option. <laughs> Fail- <laughs> failure, it, you know, I said it early on. I remember my younger sister came to help me um, set up the day before we are opening. You know, we'd done this crazy fit out and, you know, oh, like, you know, so many late nights fitting out my shop and... Her husband's um, very good yeah. At helping. I'm very lucky. My husband's Owen. very handy. Yes, mm-hmm. Owen, and you know he's been a major supporter. He never ever doubted me once, which is great. But yeah, we did this crazy fit out, and you know it came down to the line. You know the <laughs> night before we were there till two o'clock in the morning. You know getting um every all the last minute touches done, and yeah, my my sister had actually come down from Wagga and. I remember she said to me, like, because, I mean, she lived, still lived with my dad and my stepmom and, you know, they were quite negative about it all. But, yeah, she was like, oh, I actually think this is going to go really well for you. And I was like, yeah, like, it's the, failure is not an option. Like, you know, I'd, I just got a business loan for 25 grand to do this, you know, <laughs> and that was a lot of money to me back then. And, you know, failure is not an option. I don't have anyone to bail me out. So, yeah, I just pushed on. No, I would have adapted. I would have, oh, what's the business word? Pivoting. Everyone pivoted in yeah. 2020. Um, I would have pivoted my business if it hadn't have worked out, but failure was never an option for me. Most people pivoted to the biscuit tin, I think, in 2020. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so can I just ask, I know I'm going pretty deep on this, but yep. that's what this show's about. That's all good. You obviously have a lot of self-belief and you're saying it is born of maybe a stubbornness. Yep. But- I know when I opened this little studio, it's one of the things that I felt most supported by my dad because he didn't really care that I went away to uni. Like he was proud when I graduated, but it wasn't a day-to-day, oh, how's uni going thing. The family probably don't really even know, know what I'm doing here. But I only just got to that point yeah. in my mid-30s where I talked to dad because I wanted some advice and he was really supportive. Yep. But before then, if I had have had any negative feedback from someone as close as my dad or my little brother... Yes. That would have probably crushed me. So where do you think this comes from for you? Like what, why were you able to move forward? Um, I don't know. My, my dad's very, um, you know, I mentioned earlier he was a business banker for 40 years or something like that. And, yeah, he, you know, was quite negative about a lot of things and he believed that, you know, the best thing to do is just earn a really – get a really good job and earn a really good wage. Um, but I think I kind of view things a little bit differently. I'm kind of like, well, in my line of work as a beauty therapist, I came across a lot of people that were very wealthy and they all had their own businesses. And I was kind of like, well, yeah, like <laughs> it's kind of limiting just – getting a job and earning the same wage all the time and just waiting to get promoted. Like, I want to do that for myself. Like, you know, I, I don't want to wait. I want to I want to create something massive. I want to build an empire and, you know, be living the life. I want to show everyone, prove them wrong that, you know, you don't need to go to uni and, you know, be doing the nine to five corporate thing, you know, as an accountant or, a um, you know, a doctor or a lawyer or whatever. But, yeah, 
I don't know. I'm I'm stubborn. <laughs> and you are like I will also re reiterate and point this out that I've known you and Owen since since the start. What what I would say is what I think is the start. And like you said, Owen is just solid yes. there. Yes. So as much as everyone else qu- may have questioned stuff, he's just a solid there in the background supporting you. That's how I yeah. perceive it. Yeah, I'm, I'm. If you say I need this, it gets done. Yeah, <laughs> I am very, very lucky to be married to someone that is just like one hundred percent supportive. Like I don't. He's never questioned anything I wanted to. <laughs> um, and yeah, like, and he's my best mate. Like we're just mates, and <laughs> like we're just. I don't know, we're a really good team, I think, and that's been really important or, you know, that's been like a big part of the success of my business too because he's there, you know, when I'm not doing stuff with the kids and running around after them and, you know, doing a bloody salon refit (laughs) out every, you know, when we needed to fit more beds in to the salon, you know, refitting it every 12 months. (laughs) Um, But, yeah. And one thing I will say, and I will go back to like the progression from the the little city walk into where you are now, but I I know at one time we've had a conversation where you've got this big, beautiful house now and all this other stuff that you've been afforded because you've worked your ass off, both of you, basically. Mm -hmm. But there's the perception still that Owen's the breadwinner sometimes to people that don't know. Yeah. When I say breadwinner, and I don't I don't actually like that term yeah. because you're saying it's a team thing. Definitely. But there's still the perception that you're just a little beauty therapist that like fluffs around and puts just makeup on makes people. people pretty. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I I have had a lot of experiences like that, um especially from um my husband's side of the family. mm mm-hmm. Mhm. We went to a wedding um, about a year ago now and uh, I was talking to one of my husband's aunties and she said, oh, how's your little salon going? <laughs> and I said, oh, yeah, good. Good, thank you. <laughs> and, and she said, oh, have you got anyone working in there with you? Have you got anyone helping you out? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I've got, I've got eight girls in there now. And she goes, oh, oh, well, that's good then. And <laughs> then there was another conversation at the same wedding, actually, from one of my husband's cousins. And we just moved into our house. Sorry, it was two years ago, not one year ago. It was the start of 2019. Yeah, we just moved into our new house and... Um, my husband Owen was showing his cousin um, some photos of our house. Yeah, he he actually said, "Oh, geez, you must be on a good wicket at the council, mate." <laughs> and, and 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 Owen goes, "No, no, it's you know, like yeah, like I do all right, but it's Lauren, like <laughs> you know, like it's Lauren that's done this." And 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 yeah, his cousin went, "Nah, no way." No way. What is she, like, sticking fake eyelashes on people? She wouldn't make much money doing that. (laughs) Yeah. And, yeah, we just kind of laugh about it. Owen doesn't care. He's not one of those blokes that, you know, is worried about, you know, his um, wife out earning or or anything like that. It's not not like that at all. So, yeah. I described um, to Josh that you're – I, I won't say highly, you're intense and focused and just OCD, like you said. Mm-hmm. And Owen is just, just this chill, cash, like just rolls with everything type. And <laughs> and you're such a good pair because you balance each other out. Yes. I think his favourite phrase um, to say to me is, don't let a warrior. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you worrying about this? Don't let a warrior. <laughs> Because <laughs> everything worries me. <laughs> yeah. So from from the little city walk and it just went, I want to know what, for someone that is so perfectionist, what's it like to bring someone in and have to sort of trust them with your client? Because I'm bad at handing stuff over myself. It was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to do in my business. 
and I still, that's an issue for me that I still struggle with. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I initially, yeah, um, my first team member, I would hang on to every little, like I could hear the conversations. (laughs) Like I would hang on to every word that was spoken and, yeah, I probably micromanaged a little bit too much, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, But, yeah, I found that something yeah I found that really really difficult to start with but as the year of years have gone on uh, I think I've been employing people now for yeah well since 2014 um so I think I've been yeah coming up seven years as an employer this year but yeah and I have a lot more staff now and I've kind of come to the realization that I don't need to be the best I don't need to be well, to grow a business, sorry, I'll backtrack a bit. Mm-hmm. To grow a business, you need, like, I believe you need to hire people that are better than you. Yeah, okay. I I don't want to be known as the best at sticking lashes on people anymore. I don't want to be on the tools 24-7. I can't be on the tools. I would not have been able to grow my business to what it is today if I was still sitting at that treatment bed doing clients 40 hours a week. You, like you need time to think, you need time to plan, you need time to market. And it's quite funny because I get asked a lot, what do I do on my days off? Because I only work one and a half days in, in my salon on clients now. Mm-hmm. And I quite I get asked nearly every day, what do I do on my days off? Yeah, But I don't have a day off, like, ever. Yeah. <laughs> Just because I'm not sticking lashes on people doesn't mean I'm not working. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, um, you, I, I do believe you need to hire people that are better than you because I want them to attract clients and build, like, their clientele for the business. I don't ne- – I can't wear that hat. I can't be the best person in there anymore. So, Yeah. Might be a bit of a controversial opinion. No, not no. at all. Well, like, you want to be the entrepreneur. Yeah. And the strategic thinker, you don't want to be a technician. No. Because you not can only anymore. ever grow so much. That's it. It's limited by time. It so. is limited. There's only a certain amount of number of hours in the day, and you can't wear all the hats. You can't do everything. And I tried to do everything in the beginning. Yep. And I, I did. This. I, I succeeded for a while, but. In the end, you fall in a heap. That's when you need to learn how to systemize and delegate things. That's another thing that I work on all the time is systemizing and handing off jobs that I I know in my heart I can do them, but it's just a time sucker and I need to hand them off. So, yeah. See, this that little part fascinates me because relinquishing and being okay with having people better than you in an industry that you worked so hard to to be the best, I suppose, initially. Yes. Is a big a big point to sort of come to and be okay with that. How long did it sort of get you to get your head around the fact that it was okay not to be the best? Because you are a perfectionist. Yes. So to almost put that hat to the side and go someone's allowed to be better than me at this is, a, I would imagine, a bit of a mental battle. Yes, it is. Early on, I I knew that I never wanted to be doing lashes or beauty forever. I didn't want to be in that actual role forever. And I knew that I wanted to grow my business and as Josh just said, there's only a certain amount of numbers in a day. You know, I could do six figures on my own. Like I did, I I, I turned over, I turned over a hundred grand in my first year and, you know, that's great for someone working on their own. Like my accountant at the time was like, what? You made over a hundred grand sticking fake eyelashes on people? (laughs) Yeah. But I don't. Um, I knew that I wanted more and I knew that to do that I had to employ a number of people. I needed a bigger space. I needed, you know, quite a few 
lash artists or beauty therapists working with me to make more money. And that was the goal. Not that I'm completely, I'm not completely money focused. I'm, I'm more about what earning more money brings, more of a, more freedom. And, you know, my kids are a little bit older now and, you know, I missed out on a lot early on, probably the first two years of building my business. I was at work, you know, full-time plus hours and I did miss out on a lot. And, you know, I opened my salon when my son was 10 months old and, you know, he's, he's going to be eight this year and my daughter's 10 and I'm able to go pick them up and drop them off at school and, you know, I'm, I'm able to do a lot more with my kids now because I have a team in there earning me money like, I don't have to be in there and I'm earning money. It so, sounds like, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, but when I think about just from when I business studies in the past, the systems mindset, essentially the idea is to build a system where anyone can perform a certain task to the quality or better than what you would do yes. it yourself. Is that prevalent in the industry? No. Because I... I mean, I was friends with a, a hairdresser that was in a pretty high-end salon around here, and although the work that went out the door was incredible, they did a lot of weddings and colouring and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Behind the scenes, it was a jumbled, disorganised mess. yeah. And it was really just the fact they had so many... They just happened to get a bunch of really talented people in the same salon at the same time. Yeah, and that's really So how did you fluke. know that... <laughs> yeah, exactly, it's a fluke. How did you know that applying really granular systems type thinking to the the industry you're in, how did you know to do that? Or is it something you, did you read about it or did you see failures and you're like, well, there's got to be a way to fix that? Well, I never did business studies. I wish now that I did. (laughs) Well, I can tell you from doing it a degree, you don't cover anything as useful as systems thinking. Okay. All right. That's probably a more, you know, something that's in the entrepreneurial world. Yeah. Yeah. I started working with a business coach, yeah, around about 2016, so two years into uh, my business. And I think she was the one that sort of put the idea in my mind that I can, yeah, create systems for everything and how to create them. Um, I mean, it's very, very easy though. Can you maybe give the listener just an idea of a simple system that you have that you, is it documented? Like yes, do it exactly yes. this way? So like I have like... A, like a manual for nearly everything in my business. So most of them are administration tasks that are, that are documented. It's a little bit difficult for actual beauty treatments because, you know, it's, everyone does them a little bit differently and you, still, and you still achieve the same result at the end of the day. But, yeah, I, I have like a full admin procedure manual. So... Just say, for example, I had a new team member came like to come in and do admin. All I would have to do is open up a folder and there's a process, like literally, you know, how to unlock the salon, use the key to unlock the door, walk in, use your alarm code, turn all the lights on, turn the computers on, turn all the wax pots on, put the music on. This is the Spotify playlist that we listen to. Like it is step by step. Like you would have to be pretty dumb not to understand it <laughs> but yeah so and and things like um sending marketing emails uh, we send you know all our, our all our new clients that come in um we sent we we put them all into a spreadsheet and send them an email with a like a credit like a 15 dollar voucher to use on their next service so it just encourages them to come back in straight away And, you know, birthday um, emails, like I'm just talking about marketing emails, it's all documented. So step by step with screenshots. Also, um, because, yeah, we have a manual, it's just all saved in Google Drive. You know, you can record your screen doing things so people can actually watch you do the process. So, yeah, like I can just say marketing emails need to be sent out, you know, every second Monday. Birthday emails need to be sent out on the first business day of every month. And I wouldn't have to spend my time teaching staff how to do that. Anyone could just pick up the manual and okay, know how so to do it. For everyone who's at home, how have you inspired the people who work with you and for you to actually read and embrace that? Ooh, cliffhanger. So we thought that was a really good spot to finish up part one of our conversation with Lauren. 
she was such a warm personality to have in the room. But obviously, as you're hearing when it comes to business, just a wealth of knowledge and just doesn't take no for an answer. And as she put it in there, failure was not an option. And yeah, that was pretty powerful in the room. So hopefully that came through in the audio. Part two with Lauren is coming next week. And that's when you really get a feeling as to the scale and the achievements of her business and her as a practitioner in the beauty world. It's pretty amazing. So look out for that. Once again, go to punchingsideways.com to listen to the next episode, to share an episode, to buy us a coffee. And as we've been saying lately, a share is as good as a dollar. So if you can't support us financially, we absolutely understand that. The world's pretty upside down at the moment. But yeah, if you could share the show with someone you know that might like it, that would be, uh, yeah, bloody awesome. Righto, guys. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.